Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to create uh, powerful M1 finance pies uh, related to uh, undervalued dividend growth stocks. Um, so I pair up a stock screen called Vinbox to find undervalued dividend growth stocks. Your strategy might be different, um, but you can. I'll show you the exact criteria that I use to you to find um, attractive dividend stocks. If you don't know what M1 Finance is, it is a free, fully automated investing platform that enables you to make direct investments in stocks or ETFs or create a pie uh, to allocate capital automatically to certain stocks. So uh, you can use multiple pies within one investment account. You can have a hybrid of direct or, or pie investing. Um, and as you know, an investor myself, I found out M1 Finance, and um, I'm very excited because there's just so many ways that you can create a portfolio, and a lot of ways that you can be creative, and it's all fully automated, completely free. Um, so just imagine, you know, any bu busy professional can just uh, automatically dump money into M1 Finance, and it'll all get put to work according to your investment strategy and your investing goals. So for me, I like finding individual stocks that are uh, attractively valued. And to do so, I use a tool called Finbox.io. Um, so with Finbox, I'll show you and I'll walk you through exactly uh, the screening uh, that I do. Um, I use Finbox Pre Premium to find uh, uh, the stocks that you know meet certain thresholds for me. Uh, they have different examples or even pre-built templates that you can use uh, things like strong upside uh, benjamin graham dream of dividends bottom hunter cash is king so what i like to do is sort of think about uh, a number of these and then layer in certain criteria that's per, you know uh, fits my personal goals uh, so let's get into the, the the screening the actual screening uh, criteria So there's obviously 4,500 stocks, uh, uh, you know, in that database, or even uh, 5,700. Um, so that you know, that's a lot of stocks. Uh, that's why I love screens so much, is because it just removes the noise of the stock market. Uh, a lot of people uh, chattering about, you know, various stocks in the news. You know, really, I think a, a best strategy is just outlining your particular criteria and just saying these are the stocks that I'm going to look at or even do more uh, diligence on. Um, so I'm a dividend investor on stocks that are that actually pay dividends. Um, so that's criteria number one. Uh, another one is dividend coverage ratio. I want greater than two times coverage. So um, that means per share relative dividends per share. So this just ensures safety on the actual dividend. I don't really care about what the dividend need is. I just want to know that the dividends could be there for the foreseeable future, and there's a high likelihood of this being increased into the future. Um, market capitalization. I like stocks that are at least one billion dollars uh, in market cap. You know, these stocks are, you know, have some sort of competitive advantage relative to size and um, uh, economic moment. Etc. Um, you know, usually larger companies will be around um, much longer than a, a small company, uh, and they're usually much more liquid uh, than, than uh, small stocks. From here, for PE ratio, I like to be less than twenty times. That's just sort of a uh, you know rough number. I, I mean. PE ratio is always built off of earnings per share of growth. And so, you know, if you're investing in the stock at 25 times and it's growing 70% per year on EPS, you know, perhaps you can make a case for that, it's undervalued. Um, but, you know, that also means that there's lofty expectations for the stock going forward. So relative to that, then I also want forecasted EPS to be, you know, at least 
five percent. You know, that combination of dividend safety plus earnings per share growth is a good formula of that. Hey, look, the dividends per share will grow in the future. Peg ratio on a forward basis, I like this to be less than one. Well, let's do between because we don't want to capture anything that's zero or less than zero. What this formula says is that uh, you know, the PE ratio relative to the earnings growth will be less than one. So like if there's a stock that's PE ratio is 20 times and EPS growth is 20%, then that's a ratio of one. You want anything less than that. And then from there, a couple more would be revenue growth. Let's go a five-year basis. We want companies that are actually growing revenue. Um, a lot of companies and public companies that are large can manage quarter over quarter on, um, on what their EPS will be. That doesn't necessarily mean they're in good financial standing. Uh, you can also make cost reductions, but that only goes so far. Um, at some point, you, you can only uh, cut uh, operating expenses so much or even cost of goods sold so much. Um, let's start with the top one and make sure that companies are actually growing on the top line. And then to capture uh, valuation, at least for the full enterprise, I like doing a EV to uh, forward EBITDA ratio of less than 15 times. EBITDA, EV to EBITDA is a good parameter of free cash flow uh, as well as um, you know, it, it removes considerations for the capital structure and, and values the entire enterprise as a whole. So here we have my full criteria. Let's hit done and see what comes out of the results. Basically, we have 62 stocks. Um, obviously, not all of these are going to make it into our, our pie. Um, I wish that's one thing I had, you know, wish about M1 Finance is if you could do a import of a sort of a, uh, an exported Excel sheet. I think that would be extremely helpful. Um, but let's do some more digging just on these particular stocks to whittle down to, you know, 10 to 15 different stocks. Hello, Finbox on, you know, the fact that you can just export this to Excel. So it enables you to digest the data a lot more uh, robustly. So from here, let's start sorting this data. I want to make sure that the peg ratio, okay, everything's good there. Um, in terms of EBITDA, let's sort by this. In terms of market cap, let's sort by market cap. And for this purpose, I think we should make the cutoff at about $5, million, $5 billion of uh, enterprise value. of at least you know all of these have big ratios of less than one um that way we get some liquid stocks in here that you know, might you know actually have some uh, robust trading and at least size size advantage um what we'll end up doing is putting these stocks into the pod some market cap weight on a market cap weighting basis. Um, okay. And all of them have somewhat attractive dividend yields. Um, another good thing, you know, about 
often the boxes they have these fair value sort of estimations. A number of these, as you can see, based on thin box, um, there we go, is probably a little too high. Um, some of these are undervalued from thin box per perspective. So let's start inputting these into a pie, and I'll walk you exactly through how to do so. Okay, so once you create your M1 finance account, this dashboard will show you um, what a pie is. So here we have our first uh, selection of stocks through Finbox that meet our criteria um, on dividend coverage and valuation up to you know, greater than $5 billion. Terms of market cap, and so let's start inputting these stocks into the pie. All right, inputting these stocks into the pie, it's relatively straightforward. I you know, wish it could be easier, um, just given you know, we have an Excel sheet, we sh should be able to at least just input these in here um, or import them. I like about this screening criteria is that uh, it opens the door to wide diversification. Um, there's certain industries if you input certain stocks, uh, there are certain criteria that you might end up with a lot of stocks that are undervalued at any given time, like when oil tanks or um, you know, there's noise in particular financials. Related stocks like banks. Nice to see an MLP in there, that'll give us some extra yield. So look, now we have 14 different stocks um, in a number of different industries, aerospace, Polaris, midstream, some healthcare, financials, pharmaceuticals. So as you recall, we had our market cap rating, which is just essentially the market cap divided by the total market cap of the included stocks. We will be we are out here to add the progressive Marriott percent allocation to 14 different undervalued dividend growth stocks. And they'll have payout ratios of less than 50%, so uh, good, uh, good idea of, uh, of uh, some safety on that yield. I like the M1 Finance dashboard. You can see here that uh, you created your first pie, and here's what the performance would have looked like. And then from there, you complete your sign up, open, and fund your account.